What we never talk about is you not only have great intellectual capacity, you have great personal courage. I've been with some of you when we've been shot at. I've been with some of you when we've been in places that you would not have any idea you'd want to be. President Biden at the State Department reviving a claim that he made in 2007 that he later had to walk back, that he'd been shot at while visiting the green zone in Iraq. Let's talk about that and breaking news out of Iran tonight with Florida Congressman and veteran Michael Waltz. Congressman, welcome back. Hey, thanks so much, Shannon. Good to be with you. So the Washington Times reports it this way. Headline, Biden revives claim of being shot at overseas. They say it's a dubious claim and one that Mr. Biden usually tells when he's running for office. They also talk about him walking it back or qualifying or explaining it in the past, but it's getting attention because it's back. What do you as a veteran make of it? Yeah, I, I have no idea why he continues to kind of exaggerate his personal experiences, but it's been a long you know, it's a long history of him doing this. This goes all the way back to the 1998 campaign when he had to drop out for plagiarism, for exaggerating his academic credentials. So I don't know, Shannon, honestly, I don't know how to explain it. There's some kind of insecurity here for never having served. Uh, you know, I, maybe perhaps when you are have done nothing but be a politician uh, since your late 20s, uh, ha hasn't built a business, hasn't served overseas, you know, really, it doesn't bring anything to the table except having been a politician, then maybe there's some kind of underlying insecurity to, to exaggerate uh, what type of danger he's been in. Well, I know there have been requests into the White House for comments. I don't think we have seen one just yet on this latest uh, comment from the president. I want to talk to you about breaking news tonight being reported by The Wall Street Journal. They say that under their headline, Iran U.N. inspectors find radioactive traces raising fresh concerns. Goes on to say materials were found at sites where Iran had blocked inspections by the International Atomic Energy Agency. We've had admission from the Trump, or excuse me, the Biden administration in recent days, too, that they are very fearful that Iran could have a nuclear weapon to developed within months, maybe even weeks. What do you make of this headline tonight? Well, it's not surprising. The Israelis uh, have been releasing information that they've been uncovering for years now that shows that Iran has never truly set aside its march towards a nuclear weapon. Uh, the Iran deal didn't do uh, what it was promised. All it really did was give the Iranian regime a ton of money up front and only suspend a very narrow portion of their program. One of the things you know, that we constantly have to remind people is there's three key components to a nuclear program. There's the missiles, there's actually being able to make the bomb, and then there's being able to weaponize it to get it onto a warhead. And all the Iran deal did was temporarily suspend one component of that. And the inspectors had to give notice months in advance. In fact, the Iranian regime rejected inspectors for seven months last year, uh, and, and they could only inspect certain sites. So, you know, just by way of analogy, it's kind of like having a bank robber on parole, and the parole officer has to give a month's notice to go check their house and can only go check one bedroom. And yet when they do, there should be no surprise that it's been relatively clean and proponents of the Iran deal, many of which now are in Biden's administration, are saying, see, there's nothing there. Uh, it, you know, the, the, the deal was absolutely a farce. What I hope the Biden administration, his new secretary of state, Blinken, his, his national security advisor and others have an open mind, look at the intelligence. Trump's maximum pressure campaign was working. Their, the amount of oil they were able to sell on the market has gone to virtually zero. They're not able to pay their terrorist proxies uh, anymore. Uh, it's had to curtail its missile program. The regime is truly struggling. And if we keep up that pressure, we could get back to a better deal, but from a position of strength with true leverage uh, and not just go back to their same old kind of Obama era thinking. That's that's my hope, Shannon. But, um, you know, we'll see in the coming weeks and months. So breaking news as well on the front in Yemen, uh, the decision to change a uh, terror designation there. Um, the New York Post says this Biden's Yemen withdrawal will only embolden the terrorists, says Biden's withdrawal from Yemen may have been intended as an olive branch to Tehran in anticipation of renewed diplomatic engagement. But it is unlikely the Iranian regime will respond reasonably to any such outreach when it senses weakness from the United States. So a terror designation changing 
we're told that it is to help humanitarian efforts be able to get into that area. Others see it as a potential overture to Iran. What do you make of it? Well, it, it has been a brutal and difficult war, but the Saudis have made it clear that they want to get to a negotiated agreement. The UAE, the United Arab Emirates, who have been in their partner in that effort, have made those same, uh, those same overtures. So I don't see this actually as a huge, uh, you know, tremendous shift here, although the Biden administration is messaging it that way. You know, at, at the end of the day, the Houthis have launched missiles into Saudi Arabia. They have launched uh, rockets and, and other t drones and other types of attacks at airports and civilian targets at the UAE. They are behaving like a terrorist organization. They're backed by Iran. They've launched at international shipping. You know, Shannon, this is kind of walks like a duck, talks like a duck. It's a duck. Uh, and, and I think this is some very kind of diplomatic rhetorical shell gaming so that the Biden administration looks like it's doing something different. But a lot of these efforts were already underway uh, in, in the last year or two, uh, moving towards a resolution in Yemen. Congressman and veteran Michael Waltz, thank you for joining us tonight.